In the spring of 2016, Alison Ward was living a normal, happy life. She had two beautiful children and a husband, Brendan. Then she started experiencing headaches and numbness, and a trip to the John Hunter Hospital resulted in emergency surgery to remove a grade four brain tumour. I knew there was something when my hands wouldn't work. I knew that there was something wrong. And were you scared at that stage? Not really, because I just thought doctors fixed everything. And that's a really good point you make, because unless it's happened to you, you do assume that doctors can make everything better. Yeah. Mm. Even when we were told, you know, it, it didn't sound good, but we still didn't comprehend no. what, what we're about to be dealing with. You just thought, well, this is surgery, OK. You're still not processing the fact that the brain tumour is brain cancer. That reality hit. I guess when the Mark Hughes Foundation team came in and met us shortly after that, you, you sort of associate the two and you just... Hello. When did you fully understand what you were dealing with? I think really Sandy sort of explained it to us, but, but it was 10 days after that when we got the results back from the surgery that we were told that it was a grade four brain tumour, which after doing our research and discussions with doctors, we realised at that point it was basically the death sentence. How does it feel to say that? It's hard, but that was the reality of it. That's how we were told that the survival rate for this is low and there's zero chance of survival. How are you feeling? Yeah, I feel kind of tired. Yeah. Really tired. Whilst they can't tell you how long, it's always a question you ask, you've got to think, we've got a plan, we had kids, you know, it's a, do we need, are we talking about 20 years, do we need to get 10 years? And it was, no, it was obviously a lot, lot shorter than that. I remember when we found out, actually, we just, we drove to the beach, we sat there and cried. It's, yeah, we're on our own and we just cried for ages. It was hard. It's hard me the courage. Alison, how do you stay strong? Some days I don't. Some days I do, it just depends. I try and be strong for the girls. Yeah. Your whole life just stops. No holidays, no nothing. We don't do anything anymore. We had a lot of good times too. You know, we've raised our kids together, we've had holidays, all of our adventures have been together. I'll start with you, Paige. Tell me about your mum. Um, she's a really friendly, nice lady. Um, she's bubbly, she loves hanging out with us, loves shopping, she loves her family. She's a bright person that likes to smile. Even though when she feels sick or she's down, she just likes to try things. What are you going to miss about Alison? <laughs> Where do I start? <laughs> Where do I start? She's been my best mate for 25 years. On top of everything else, those with brain cancer have to navigate a minefield of doctors and specialist appointments. It's really tough, and Mark Hughes experienced it firsthand, so he wanted to help others going through what he had. So he created the Brain Cancer Care Coordinator role. So we'll get James to check Alison's pain management. So I first met Ali and Brendan in 2016 when she first came into John Hunter and she was told she had a brain tumour. It was likely going to be a primary brain tumour. Um, no, he's, he's OK with it. I have been in contact with them and their family for the last three years and honestly become like family. We've gotten to know them so well. How much of a help, you mentioned Sandy from the Mark Hughes Foundation, how much of a help have they been for you guys? <laughs> oh, Sandy's amazing and she's great. She's lovely. She's like a second mum. The, um, yeah, just, yeah, she's got us through it in one piece really. It's incredible. Ali gives me chills. Ali is one of the strongest and courageous and resilient women I have ever met. She's a wonderful mother and a wonderful wife and friend. Yeah, I said that to Connie yesterday. 
I said, she just loves you, you us the pits. Mm. Ali just uh, said to me the other day when we were talking in private that she just wanted 12 more months. She just wanted another year to be able to do some really special things with the girls and with Brendan and to be able to tell her that there's nothing I can do about that is absolutely devastating. We just need to find more treatments because it's not enough. This week, the search to find a cure continues with the Beanies for Brain Cancer Round. Why do you go to all this effort? Why do we need them? I go to this effort because there's no cure for brain cancer and there's so many people in the community that need one. We're here at McDonald's Jones Stadium, we've got our own room and this is the beanie shed. It's an important because all the beanies come through here and we're surrounded by amazing volunteers who give up their time to come in and pack beanies so people get their orders. Hello there, how's it going? Yeah, good thanks, Mark. Oh, it looks busy. Yes, very busy. The support we get, it's overwhelming. Yeah, we hope to raise $3 million this year, which would be amazing. You know, brain cancer kills more people 40 and under than any other disease. And same for children 10 and under. And we've got to, we've got to stop these stats. Well, you're doing an amazing job. That's awesome. And your workplace has been incredibly supportive. I think your boss has just spent, well, probably all your bonuses on beanies. <laughs> Um, an incredible team I work with, but yeah, they did. They bought uh, nearly 1,200 beanies last week, and Mark Hughes came up and, and presented to work, and they took donations as well. It's um, it's incredible, and you know, people often say, "How can we help? How can you support?" And I mean, them supporting me. Obviously, I've been off work and everything else, but just the support they they want to give more, and they want to keep giving more. And you know, the, the girls mentioned their schools. Mark's been out there. Ali's sisters raised probably in excess of $25,000 over the last few years. Uh, other friends of hers, well over $5,000 with some other things happening. and uh, They've really rallied behind us. They really have. It, 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 and it, it makes you feel proud. And it, it's sort of, it's our way of giving back to the Marquis Foundation as well, because the support they've given us has been second to none. We, we honestly wouldn't have got through it without them. I know that your community has raised so much money already for the Mark Hughes Foundation. What would you say to people who are thinking about maybe buying a beanie or, or donating to find a cure for brain cancer? Oh, I just think Aaron, more, this, this needs more funding. You know, it's not going to help us, but, but you know, we can only pray that one day, yeah, even if not a cure, like a, just a better survival rate, you know, it's just small steps and just it's funding. Funding's the only thing that'll fix that. What would you say to people out there who are thinking about maybe helping or donating? Don't hesitate. 